Today's episode of Desert Sky Adventures is brought to you by Discover Tombstone. For all things Tombstone, go to discovertombstone.com. Fairbank, Arizona was an Old West Railroad town founded in 1882 during the Tombstone Silver Boom. From 1882 to 1903, Fairbank was Tombstone's train depot. The town had an elegant hotel with a restaurant and bar, a post office, several businesses, and a school. Fairbank was not as wild as Tombstone or Charleston, but it had its share of colorful residents and events, including the train robbery of 1900. Famous lawman Jeff Milton was a Fairbank resident at the time. We'll get into more on that later. According to the Tombstone Times, Tombstone's progressive businessmen had been lobbying for a rail line since March of 1880 when the Southern Pacific Railroad constructed its transcontinental route through Benson, only 25 miles to the north. The need for a railroad to encourage commerce by providing a reliable form of transportation for goods and passengers was seen as being of paramount importance. It was also needed to move ore from the silver mines around town to the mills along the San Pedro River. Over the years, several projects were proposed, but never materialized. Stagecoaches and other horse-drawn conveyances continued to be relied upon by the town for its transportation needs. The dream came a bit closer in 1882 when the New Mexico and Arizona Railroad was built between Benson and Nogales. The 88-mile line passed through Fairbank, located only 9 miles from Tombstone. Today we are coming to you from the historic town of Fairbank, Arizona, a place that I've never been before. And we're here today to learn a little bit about the town, see what's left of it, and to do a little exploring. Let's do that right now. It's coming up on Desert Sky Adventures. Fairbank was founded in 1882 when the New Mexico and Arizona Railroad reached the confluence of the San Pedro and Babacamari Rivers. Local ranchers Harry McKinney and William Hall filed for the land, drew up a plan for a town, and started selling lots. The town had several names, Kendall, Junction City, Y, Fairbanks, and finally Fairbank, named for Chicago investor Nathaniel Fairbank. Fairbank joined numerous towns that started along railroads in the west. By March of 1882, there was a mercantile, a blacksmith, saloon, and houses. Businesses catered to passengers and freight going to and from Tombstone. Stagecoach rides to Fairbank from Tombstone cost only $1.50, about $36 in today's money. Some residents worked at the Grand Central Mill, which processed silver ore from Tombstone. Others worked in town and businesses or at one of the numerous ranches. A group of Chinese immigrants planted crops along the river. They employed town residents in their Chinese gardens. Fairbank had about 300 residents in the 1890s. The Fairbank train robbery occurred on the night of February 15, 1900 when some bandits attempted to hold up the Wells Fargo Express car in the town of Fairbank. Although it was thwarted by Jeff Milton who managed to kill three-fingered Jack Dunlop in an exchange of gunfire, the train robbery was unique for being one of the few to have occurred in a public place It was also one of the last during the Old West period. The exact details of the gunfight are a little hard to come by, but I believe it happened at this depot, which used to stand somewhere right here. Today, nothing remains of the original structure, as it was accidentally burned down in the 1980s. A school operated at Fairbank from 1884 until 1944. The original building burned in 1920 and was replaced with this current structure. Up to 50 students were taught by two teachers, and the school was restored by the Bureau of Land Management in 2007. The school was closed in 1944. Students were then bused to Tombstone. But in 2007 restoration, original materials were used wherever possible. Doors and windows were reconstructed to match the originals. The floor is original. The blackboards are from the Lowell School in Bisbee. The desks are from Tombstone. Today this schoolhouse serves as the town museum, and it's full of great relics. Too many to show you in this video, but a couple that caught my eye were this old 1890s train ledger and some of the original paperwork. The Fairbank Mercantile Building dates back to 1882 and was open for business until 1972. It housed stores, restaurants, a post office, saloon, gas station, and a jail. Among the business owners was Joseph Goldwater, grandfather of Arizona U.S. Senator Barry Goldwater. The Mercantile was primarily a railroad freight office where customers ordered goods for delivery via train. The building was originally three separate bays that were combined under a single roof sometime before 1913. 
As railroad traffic decreased, the mercantile evolved and by the 1950s it functioned as a post office, country store, and gas station. Built in 1889 to serve railroad passengers, the Montezuma Hotel offered rooms, a restaurant, and a saloon. In August of 1894, the hotel was badly damaged during a San Pedro River monsoon flood. Four feet of water, mud, and sand inundated the hotel. Following this, the hotel was rebuilt higher up on a stone platform. A broad covered porch and row of trees surrounded the building. By 1909, Arthur Henry, owner of the Mercantile, purchased the hotel and named it the Fairbank Hotel. Photos taken in late 1930s show a derelict building that was torn down during a highway construction project in the early 1940s. Today, this small piece of the hotel's original foundation is the only thing that remains. This small house dates back to 1881, and it was originally 16 feet long, but it was extended east by another 10 feet. Three sides still show the original board and batten construction. The front was covered with the shiplap facade. The house may have originally been built by William Hall and Harry McKinney, who started the town. It is reported that a victim of tuberculosis was living in the house in the 1940s. I would have really loved to have gone inside these old buildings and see what they look like, but as you can see, this entire area is closed and off limits to guests. This historic town site also has some great hiking trails, and we decided to take this one down to the San Pedro River. On the way, we came across this abandoned railroad platform. From 1881 to 1966, four different railroads operated in Fairbank. The New Mexico and Arizona, the Arizona and Southeast, the El Paso and Southern, and the Southern Pacific. According to the curator of the museum, the green line on this map represents where we're standing now. And a railway that, according to him, ran as recently as 1990 was removed sometime around 2007. I was reminded of a story I came across while doing research for another video about these two wealthy businessmen who had an idea to start a freight and passenger train line that started in New York and ended in Tombstone using all existing track. Well, long story short, one of the businessmen was fed up with the amount of time it took to accomplish this, and he decided to pull the plug on the project. In a last-ditch effort to try and salvage some of his investment, he tore up the old railroads and sold them for scrap. Today, what's left of these historic railroads litter the landscape. Eventually, we made our way down to the San Pedro River, which looks more like a creek than a river this time of year. But I'm sure the upcoming monsoon season will change that pretty dramatically. Another point of interest that we really wanted to see was the old Fairbanks Cemetery, but it was about a half mile walk down the trail to get to it. We come this far, figured we might as well keep going. Most of this hike will take you through a wooded and shaded area, but once you start climbing up the hill, there will be no relief from the sun until you go back down the hill. So keep that in mind if you plan on hiking out here. This historic cemetery at the top of the hill was pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. Lonely, desolate, but oddly tranquil.
On our way back to town, we passed this giant metal object. Not sure what it is, but it looks like it's been there for quite some time. The house across the street from the school is referred to as the teacher's house. Former residents of Fairbanks say that teachers lived in this house until the school's closure in 1944. After that, it was used as a residence. The house was originally fronted by a screened-in porch that was enclosed at some point, able to take a look through some of the windows. All right, guys, well, that will wrap it up for our look at the historic Fairbank ghost town here in southeastern Arizona. We're only about 10 miles away from Tombstone, so if you're in Tombstone, it's not a very far trip. You can come down and check this place out for yourself. There's a lot of history to see here. But well, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe on Instagram. We're at Desert Sky underscore Adventures. Also on Facebook, Desert Sky Adventures. And that'll about do it for today, folks. So until next time, we'll see you down the road.